this video is going to help you install a float valve and use a float valve for every RO system 400 gallons a day and under. The procedure is the same for each and every one of them. The maximum flow rate for the 400 and under category of the reverse osmosis systems that Coronix makes is the EX400 tall and that's about uh, 0.3 gallons a minute. That being the case, these little hot dog float valves are suited quite well for that. That's because they can handle about a one gallon a minute flow rate. Well, 0.3 gallons a minute is one third of a gallon, so this little valve right here is ideal. Now, there are other float valves that we carry and that are on the market, and I'll show you. We have these bigger commercial style ones, three quarter inch valves, big half inch orifices, stainless rods, big float balls, and then these commercial kind of cowbell valves. These valves are a little overkill. Although if you have them, they'll work. We're not going to use it in this video. We're going to use this little, as I call it, hot dog valve. Now these valves are adjustable. You just loosen up this stainless screw here on the side of the valve and the valve can be adjusted like this in the tank. Now you can adjust your fill height. They actually work down to about almost 90 degrees in either direction. Uh, what you do is you find the height that you want to fill your tank and then tighten up the stainless nut, uh, the winglet that is, and you're good to go. When that valve hits, you'll feel the needle and seat in that valve. You'll feel them make contact and that's when the valve will close and the RO will shut off. Now uh, to install this valve, you need to cut a half inch hole in your tank or reservoir. Okay, I've already done that on this little mini tank that we're going to demonstrate it with. After you cut a half inch hole, you'll undo the bulkhead nut on the valve right here. Make sure you keep the rubber gasket on it. You'll put the valve through the hole with the gasket side on the inside and just thread on the bulkhead nut like that, when you're done, you will have a valve installed in a tank like this. And we can adjust the float level by simply undoing the wing nut and adjusting the valve to where we want it. I'm going to put it quite low in this, tighten up the wing nut, and this little mini reservoir is almost ready to go. There is a final step, and that is to install this female connector RO fitting on the valve. This is where you're going to plug in the permeate line from your RO filter. After you install the bulkhead nut, then you come through um, and just three wraps is good. Teflon. And then you'll install your female connector like that. We already have some Teflon on this tank, so we're just going to install the connector. So it's plastic on plastic. Uh, really, you could hand tighten this thing if you're not strong enough, though. Yeah, grab a little crescent wrench and give it, a, give it an extra turn. There's really not much pressure on these fittings. Then, you're going to take the RO output of your water filter. That RO output is always uh, on the permeate side of the ASV, the white line side. Grab that line and just run it over to the float valve, plug it in, like that. Now we're ready to fill this tank. How it works is like this. And you can find more about this information in the how it works section, but as water pressure builds up in this line, and it's gonna build up because the float valve is going to start raising, it's going to start closing off the line the needle is going to be in the seat, the valve is going to start its closing action, pressure is going to build up in this line. When that happens, the magic of the ASV happens. The pressure in this line will be pushing the rubber diaphragm of the ASV in this way, and it's going to shut off the drain water. Okay. Now you can see in the how it works section on auto shutoff valves, ASVs, uh, and see the, the motion diagram of how these work. It's really cool. But in a nutshell, when pressure builds up on the 
permeate side of this valve, which is this side flowing through, it pushes a rubber diaphragm in and it shuts off the drain water. So these two things work in conjunction with each other. The float valve starts to close, pressure builds up in the line, as pressure builds up in the line, it pushes the diaphragm in and it shuts the drain water off. If you didn't have an ASV, then the drain water would never stop flowing. And if you didn't have a float valve, then the RO water would never stop flowing. So these two things work together really coolly uh, to have a sort of automated mini water treatment system. So let's fill one up. I'll show you how it works. Now you can see we've turned our GX400 on. We're making about 400 gallons a day, and we're filling up this little mini reservoir. Now, I'm going to grab the drain line of the GX400, which is right here. Okay. And I'm going to show you how the float valve and the auto shutoff valve work in conjunction with each other. If I uh, artificially manipulate this valve and pick it up, closing off the permeate stream, the drain water is going to shut off. And if I lower the valve, reducing the pressure in the permeate line, the auto shutoff valve is going to open up again and the drain water will flow. So, valve up, valve down. Now, depending on how much RO tubing you have hooked up to your tank is going to depict how long it takes for the drain water to shut off. A long run of tubing, it's going to take a little time to build up the pressure because you've got all this tubing to build up pressure in it. So the shorter the run of tubing, the better. If you're going to go uh, more than 10 feet from an RO system to a tank, you should upsize the tubing to from quarter inch to three eighths. And that goes for the drain line as well. So with this run of tubing right here, about six feet or so, it's going to take a little less than three seconds. Valve up, two, two seconds. Valve down, open. That's how a float valve works.